My husband is blind and this is what we do for a living. Okay, Matthew, before we get into what we do now, why don't we share our very first jobs ever. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you wanna go first? This is a good one. Yeah. So, my first job, wait, you're, 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 give, give me a little space here. <laughs> give me a wait little a space. second. There you're asking me to, as if I know what there we, we even look like on the screen right now. There we go. I'm just seeing. I'm in this half, you're in that. <laughs> tell me, I always, uh, tell me where you're to good. sit. Are we you're not good. evenly you're right. you're spaced? perfectly spaced. Thank you, fully sighted husband. Yes. For pointing out. Wow. My first job <laughs> was outdoors. Beautiful, well no, it was not beautiful. Oh. Hot, humid, okay. sweltering summer heat. Oh. Working outside. What? When? Yeah. How old were you? This was child labor. <laughs> of course. This yeah. was child labor. Yeah. Out on a farm. Out on a farm. Yeah. You were picking something. Picking. What? Blueberries. Blueberries. I was a little <gasps> blueberry picker. I love out blueberries. Out on a farm. Do you, do you still it was like a great blueberries? job because you could eat of course while you worked. That's amazing. All you want. So you were Deli just handfuls. <laughs> I don't think you were supposed to be doing that. I, I don't know, I was like, this is just part of it, you know? <laughs> one for the bag, uh -huh. one for my mouth, one <laughs> oh for the bag, God. two for my mouth. Okay, how long did this job last? Were you fired? <laughs> Not, you know, it was just like a summer thing. A it was just job. a summer job, and you were to do. Paid. I was paid. Or were your, were your parents paid, or like, well, did I mean, you get the money in a bank account? I don't remember. Don't ask me questions like that. <laughs> this is important. I was there for the blueberries, Paul. <laughs> you were paid not for the money. Do you still like blueberries? I love blueberries. Oh wow! The other night when we didn't have when, when our friends were over and they were making that dessert that had oh. blueberry. We had this thing called Dutch, Dutch baby. baby. It had blueberries in it. I was sitting so over delicious. by the sink where they had been strained, and uh, I was just eating them. You were raw, right out, raw blueberries. <laughs> Right out of the <laughs> took you back to your childhood and those hard days in the field. You know, I think I was fired because I drove <laughs> the tractor. What? Through the blue. Wait a second. Through over. Now, you know what you're supposed to drive the tractor down the road. You were driving between you were the operating rows. Operating a bushes. tractor. Drive between the rows. Wait a Not second. Perpendicular oh, to so them. Oh, so they're bushes. Why was they're I like thinking bushes. like strawberries? No, no, like these, no. These were like tall bushes. Okay. And, and what part of the country, can I ask what part of the country you were in? This was in the Midwest. Okay. And you and were out actually operating a tractor. I was. This is, I was just picturing this little boy with a basket. No, you you're, have in, a, a, you you're know, in a tractor. That's a children's book illustration. <laughs> yes. Real life, sweat, <laughs> tears. Uh-huh. Uh, and you, I drove you over through blueberry Ma Matthew. bushes. I almost called you maple. maple. Matthew, you were destroying the bushes. Accidentally, the <laughs> tractors are hard, to, you know, forward, this backwards. This is terrible. You were horrible at this job. But do you know what this I did? This poor man who you know hired what I did? You. Yeah. Little honest Abe that I was. Yeah. I immediately went and I picked up all those blueberries. Then you ate them. Bushes, I stood them back <laughs> up. They were I dead. Like, I like, no, not, they didn't look dead yet. <laughs> so I stood them back up in yeah, their rows. Yeah, yeah. I even like pierced them back into the ground so they'd stay upright. When I left, five minutes later, yeah. it looked like the row was perfectly oh. intact. Like you had intentionally done it. No, oh. you couldn't tell I'd, I'd, I'd run over a single I, They looked better than when you got there. I you, think so. You mowed them over and then you kind of lined Still, them up. I lined them up straighter. So perfect. <laughs> that was the job. You know, and I then know eventually it was discovered it that a couple of oh, bushes had been God. run over and were dead and had been like pierced back into the ground <laughs> to this is terrible. I want everyone to know that I had this vague knowledge that you'd pick blueberries. I didn't know this story. I didn't know the tractor or the bushes. This is eight years into our relationship and we are still hearing new stories yeah. from each other. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do you the same service. I'm pretty sure you've heard this story. What was your first job? My very first job <laughs> was as a child actor. Oh yeah. Yeah, when I was- I Forget that. <laughs> you forget that, don't you? It was a hard working job. Yeah. When I was 11 years Slave old. Slave labor. No, again. again, child labor. Child labor. But these, I was part of a, like the union and everything. This is all very like done properly. I was 11, no 12. And my, my mother and my brother and I moved back to Canada. Okay. And my, for whatever reason, 
one of the first things my mother did, because I guess she'd done a little bit of extra work as a kid. We moved to Vancouver. Vancouver, for anybody who knows, Vancouver, Canada is like the, it's called Hollywood North. It's, it's the, the Hollywood, Hollywood of, Canada. of Canada, where all the movies are made. Palm trees, And any time you, summer, you see a round. movie that is set in Seattle, which interestingly enough is where we live now. It is never actually filmed in Seattle. It is filmed in Vancouver because it looks very similar. So my first job, we got an agent. Yes. And we started doing extra work. So we were in the background of like TV movies and commercials, miming, pretending to talk, sitting in restaurants. You as a little kid? As a little kid. Wow. My mom, my brother, and I would do well, this together. Three of you would be like But interestingly, interesting thing happened. Our agent said to my mother, I think your son Paul might be able to make the leap from background actor to commercial actor. He just has a little something. And what they I think they saw was just my little something. Your I was just little, a little, little more extra. Of my little extra. Your little extra extra yeah. coming through. He has that little charisma. But I, I went and I saw, I went to the agent and had an audition, she hired me. And I started to go to commercial auditions, like weekly. My, and actually got to miss school a lot. I was taken out of class to go to these auditions. And over about a two year period, I would do these commercial auditions, which would terrify me. I'd have to learn my lines, I couldn't eat, I was sick to my stomach. I ended up booking four major commercials in my childhood. And one of them was for Mrs. Buttersworth, you know, the talking pancake syrup? Bottle. Bottle? Yes. Yes. And so uh, that was probably my fondest memory, the best day ever, because I got to eat pancakes for 13 straight hours. Wow. And between takes, they'd hand Who us- Who was making that many pancakes? They had people. We, the premise of the commercial was a pancake eating contest. So there was four of us kids lined up at one of those tables with like the gingham, you know, tablecloth yeah. and the big stacks of pancakes that look all beautiful. And we run up to the table and we just start eating. So we did this take after take after take all day long. It was set in an outdoor carnival setting all make-believe, of course. It wasn't a real carnival yeah. or anything. And I had so much fun. They passed a spit bucket around. So everybody was spitting into this bucket and it came to me and I was like, I'm good. No. I'm eat I'm enjoying my pancakes. Pan <laughs> the only reason I'm here is to eat pancakes. So that was my first job. By the way, it was a good paying job. Although, I don't remember what happened to the money. I think we like paid our rent with it, literally. Like, <laughs> my, so I was paying the rent at the age of 12. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Fun, fun first jobs. Yeah. Very different. You, I was a humble farm laborer and yeah. you were a television star. <laughs> By the way, I never saw my commercial on TV, but some of my friends and my family did. And okay. I didn't, they don't give you a, like a, a cassette of it. So, Paul. Yes. Tell us about having a disability. In the workplace. And, yeah, in the workplace. Okay, so I, that like? I was diagnosed with my disease, retinitis pigmentosa, at the age of 16. Uh, that, at that time, I wasn't working. I was just going to high school, was no longer doing commercials. Uh, but a little later, when I was in college, I did get a job, and the blindness did play a factor in it. So I had enough vision that I wasn't using a cane yet, I didn't have a dog. And in fact, when I went to my first job interview during college, which was at a video store, remember those video rental stores? Cause wow. I wanted to make movies, I wanted to be in the movie biz. <laughs> You're basically yes. in the movie business. Exactly. If you're handing out VHRs. But VHSs. VHSs. <laughs> we don't even know what they're called anymore. It's been so long. So I went to my job interview. I didn't tell them about my disability because I was afraid they wouldn't give me the job. So I lied and I pretended like I'm fine, totally sighted. Anyway, what ended up happening, we've talked about this on a previous video. I had to walk home one time after closing in the dark and I was attacked. I was hit in the head and I was attacked by somebody. It was very scary. That is not what led to me leaving the job. However, the thing that really got too difficult for me to continue was the company changed their user interface on the computers that we had to oh, okay. we, we were using. And it went from like a bold, high contrast user interface that I, as a low vision person at the time, with probably half of my vision, could safely navigate. They switched to something that had like, I swear, Matthew, like light gray, font on like a white background. <laughs> I couldn't see anything wow. anymore. And I told them like, I can't navigate this screen. And there was nothing they could do. There was no adaptive technology to change it. There was no internal thing for somebody in my situation yeah. at that time. And so I had to leave the job. And at that time I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's gonna be hard for me to find a job yeah. that I could do. Okay, what jobs did we have when we met? Right. So, so that I was a violinist. I've been playing the violin since I was three years old. Um, so I was playing, teaching a little, and then I was also a fitness instructor because being a violinist, being a struggling artist,
this doesn't pay well, so you have extra jobs. You have many jobs, as many as you can get. So I was also a fitness instructor. <laughs> yes, and you were making it work, weren't you? I mean, you were paying I mean, your rent, you were getting your groceries, yeah, you weren't going on fancy international vacations or no, anything. No, no, no. But you yeah, were fine. I was working. You were a struggling artist. It's okay, I was a struggling artist. And that just so happened to be what I was as well yeah. when you and I met. So yes, you were uh, doing your your music and everything, and I was doing fully at that time was fully doing art. Struggling artist meets struggling artist. After college and after I failed to find jobs that had like equipment that would help that I could use as a low vision legally blind person, I just started my own studio because my passion was always visual arts and painting, and I would paint large pieces, uh, canvases, on big canvases, and with with my acrylic paints, and I would advertise these like on online, and I would put them up in local um, coffee shops, restaurants, some galleries, and then the cool thing was I would start to get commission requests. So largely what I was doing when I met Matthew was working on these large commissioned pieces that would take me like anywhere from two weeks to a whole month to create. And so our first date eight years ago was a violin slash painting lesson. So that is how these, the violin two, for him. these two struggling artists came together to, to share their art with each other. <laughs> And that's how we sort of made it work. So Matthew, that's what we were doing yes, when for we a living. If, if what do we do now? Barely surviving. <laughs> yeah. What do we do now? So I consider myself now a full-time content creator. I know it's a cringy word to say. But, <laughs> it, uh, I don't think it is. I, uh, it kind of is. Anytime I hear someone say it, I'm like, ouch, uh -huh. ouch. Which is not something we set out to be. No. But it did organically so what happen. What we do, uh, producing and making and filming, uh, the TikToks, the reels, the shorts that we put out, five days a week, um, these I would long form videos that we put up. Mm -hmm. Here on YouTube, which we only started last year. I would say, for me, the organic evolution of that. Yeah. Because like I said, we did not set out to become content creators. But the organic evolution is that when I met you, I was already using social media to promote my artwork. That was sort of like, so it was sort of a natural thing for us to be sharing things on social media because it was actually generating sales for my art. And that is why even today, as our social media has grown and we've had so much fun using the platform to educate people about blindness and interabled relationships, which has been, I think, the coolest thing that we do. We didn't expect that it would grow as much as it did. But the benefit of that is that it has allowed me as an artist in yeah, a children's book Yeah, you don't consider illustrator. yourself a content creator first and foremost. First what and do foremost, you consider yourself? I'm an author and illustrator, right? So I'm yeah. still an artist and a visual storyteller, and I will do that as long as I can until all my vision is gone. And, and then we'll probably continue to do it without pictures, you know, in, in novels and things like that. Yeah. I have lots of ideas. But the social media has opened me up to it. Most people in my position who are independently creating their art don't have the opportunity that I have. So I feel incredibly grateful that we have such a big audience to share my art with because it actually now has become a really, really big part of what we do is managing my website and selling the books and the art and the plushies. Yeah, which so you do. We are both content creators, but Paul is first and foremost an author and an illustrator. Yeah, and as content creators, aside from the author, illustrator, and my website, of course, you may have noticed like sometimes we work with brands and we get to do like ads and things like that. And that's how con most content creators do make a living. But we're very lucky that we have this other thing, which is Paul's books, my books. the slushies, the stickers, the artwork. Yes, it's super cool. And many more to come. I want to know, what was your worst job ever? My worst job ever? Yes. I've had a few bad ones, but there is one that probably takes the cake. I want to know your answer as well. Okay. And I want to I answer. Want to quickly think of my worst job. We're gonna talk about that on today's extended episode. Okay. Okay. So, what is it? Am I going first? Well, well should I go first? Yeah, I like it when okay. you go first. <laughs> If you wanna hear our worst jobs, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Matthew and Paul right here. Yeah. You can get all of our bonus all episodes, of all of our live streams. There's we so do much live now. stream. We did last week. You yes. can watch it all right there. Or if you're on YouTube, right. you can actually tap right here. Matthew, I wanna ask you, what yes. do you think we'll be doing in like 10 years? Well, Maple will be retired by then and our yes. full-time jobs will be just waiting hand and paw. <laughs> You'd be fat and happy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>